from the Huntington Bank Studio. This is Colts 360. Yo, bring it up real quick, bring it up. I'll tell you what now, I'm so excited about, about the men in this room. Because guess what? We just kept fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. And guess what? We came out on top at the end. Yes, right? Yeah. That's what it's about, right? You guys are doing a hell of a job, but we got to keep going right we got to keep going don't enjoy it right like we always say but guess what it's on to the next one it's on to the next one right let's get our minds right get our bodies right right because we're going to go to cincinnati and go get it done there it ain't always pretty bro hey 12 round championship round we came out that's how we win let's go baby keep going baby let's go close on three one two three Starting off the month of December with a divisional road win and starting off this week's Colts 360 with head coach Shane Steichen. Coach, how does that game last Sunday against Tennessee just kind of personify and embody finding a way to win no matter the circumstances? Yeah, no, it was awesome to see. It was There's so much back and forth in that game. Uh, obviously, would, <laughs> would have liked to go a little different, a little cleaner, uh, but the guys fought, uh, found a way to win the game, and, you know, that's a stat that matters, and, uh, you know, credit to those guys going out and executing there at the end. I know that you only get 24 hours to celebrate a win or a loss, but when you have – a game like that, you mentioned it's back and forth. It is a roller coaster. It is emotional. It's an overtime divisional game. Do you feel like it takes a little bit longer maybe to recover mentally or physically for the guys from a game like that? Uh, I'm sure it does a little yeah. bit, um, but obviously having a victory Monday is nice uh, for those guys and then, you know, getting their minds ready to go for Cincinnati on Wednesday. Four wins in a row. Colts have the longest active win streak in the, N or in the AFC tied for the longest active win streak in the NFL alongside oh, a couple of teams just casually San Francisco and Dallas. What is it that the guys in this locker room have either proven to themselves or learned about themselves over the course of these four games? I think it's just believing in each other and having each other's backs. You know, uh, you know, there's going to be tough times throughout the game. You know, you might be down uh, at, in certain points of the game like we were against Tennessee. Uh, but believing in each other, we're going to win this game. And uh, I think that's the thought process uh, every week. That's the mindset that these guys have uh, that we're going to find a way to win. And you have the mindset where you're locked in, focused on the next immediate opponent ahead of you. But when you have a team that is playing meaningful games into the month of December, you're sitting at 7-5, and five, how do you keep your guys from maybe looking around at other things that are happening across the league, looking at what playoff scenarios are, and maintain focus on internally and how you guys are preparing? Yeah, I think it's human nature, right, to hear that stuff, where the playoff picture and all that. But keep the main thing the main thing and, and focus on the task at hand and control what we can control, you know, because right now we control our own destiny. and. Uh, we got to handle business this Sunday in Cincinnati. Somebody that handled business down there in Nashville was Alec Pierce, and he is our guest coming up a little bit later in studio. He had a career day. How much patience over the course of this season has Alec exuded in just waiting for that opportunity to come and then being ready when his number was called? Yeah, no, uh, you got a ton of respect for Alec. Obviously, you know, he hasn't gotten as many touches um, this year, but, you know, the ball at some point is going to come around to him. And, uh, you know, yesterday in Tennessee was his day for that. Uh, and he came up with the big plays, obviously the big post that we hit early in the game, third play of the game, and then obviously that overtime, you know, huge shot, shot play uh, that he ran there and great throw by Gardner. Uh, but he stepped up big time for us and made the plays when we needed to have him. And we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge how big the special teams showed up last Sunday as well. For all the dirty work that goes in to special teams, for those guys who have kind of, you know, such unglamorous jobs, unsung heroes, how fun is it to watch them have such great success? Guys like Nick Cross, Grant Stewart, Tony Brown, Sheku Alubi. Yeah, I know it's awesome to see those guys go out and execute. Uh, those guys understand their role, uh, being what they are on special teams and doing it at a high level. Uh, and to get two block punts uh, in a game is, is huge. And uh, credit to those guys making it happen and credit to Brian Mason, our special teams coordinator, for putting him in a position to make plays. It is a quick road trip down I-74 this week to Paul Brown Stadium to face the Bengals, who we know are without Joe Burrow. but. How much is there to catching a team that's coming off of a short week with Cincinnati having to play down in Jacksonville with Monday Night Football? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Uh, we're really just starting to dive into those guys right now today, um, but it'll be a tough challenge uh, anytime on the road. I know it'll be a hostile environment down there uh, in Cincinnati, uh, but we're looking forward to that challenge.
How many times after you've gone back to watch the game film have you watched the, the Pittman touchdown, the walk-off touchdown in overtime? Probably a handful, right? I've probably watched it three times. Uh, yeah, we think, I think it's three, worth watching at least one more time. Yeah. So here it is, field level point of view from the Pittman walk-off touchdown and the well-deserved celebration afterward. I think it just showed like kind of early like that was going to be a way that we we're going to be able to make plays in the game, um, move the ball, score score points just off big plays. So I think it kind of like opened the door for you know some opportunity for them to call later stuff later in the game. Still ahead, fresh off a career day, Alec Pierce explains how patience paid off in setting up his breakout day and that clutch moment to seal the overtime victory against the Titans. Next on Colts 360. Forte Sports Medicine and Orthopedics is proud to be the team physicians of the Indianapolis Colts. At Forte, fellowship trained physicians and staff provide comprehensive, specialized sports medicine and orthopedic care to active patients of all ages. To learn more, visit ForteOrtho.com. When the Colts score, the kids win. Meyer, the official super center of the Colts, and the Colts will donate $500 to Riley Children's Foundation for every Colts touchdown pass this season. For updates throughout the season and to learn more about how you can donate to Riley Children's Foundation, visit Colts.com slash Meyer. Overtime in Nashville. Go on, go on, win it right now. Tennessee 28, Colts 25. And now Gardner Minshew and the Colts offense will have a chance to answer. Back in the throw, good protection. Hangs in there, taking a shot for Alec Pierce. Minshew, here's the deep shot, looking for Pierce. He's got it. Pierce at the five. What a throw by Gardner Minshew. Drop good snap. Looks to his right. And the inside throws it. Michael Pittman. Oh, Touchdown. Touchdown, Michael Pittman. Ball game. Oh, my God. Good throw. Joining me now on Colts 360 wide receiver Alec Pierce. Alec coming out of that game in Nashville, a sweep of the Titans, that overtime win. Have you been a part of a wilder game in your entire football career than what we experienced last Sunday? Probably not. Not, not that I can remember, at least off the top of my head. When you got that touchdown early, you had it in the first quarter. How did that establish that chemistry that would come to fruition later in overtime with Gardner that set up the Pittman touchdown? I think it just showed like kind of early like that was going to be a way that we we're going to be able to make plays in the game, um, move the ball, score score points just off big plays. So I think it kind of like opened the door for, you know, some opportunity for them to call later stuff later in the game. We saw from the sidelines before the offense went out in overtime. Obviously, Tennessee had gotten the field goal, so you guys had to answer. 
there was a moment where Reggie is huddling up with you and Michael, and then I believe Shane comes over as well. What were the conversations that were going on in particular with Reggie before you guys went out to take the field? Yeah, I think he was just telling us, you know, at, talking about a few things that we might be looking to run um, and just and just like letting us know, like, like, you know, we it's our time to make a play, like we're gonna do a little spark, so. Where has Reggie made the greatest impact on you, especially now having a second season, working with him as your wide receivers coach? Yeah, um, I'd say my technique, just running my routes, you know, detailing everything up, being consistent with the details. Um, yeah, just being consistent and all that things. Um, I think that's the biggest thing and then, you know, he's been he's been a good help with just like kind of a mentality, I think. Able to talk with him. He's kind of went through the same same type of things, uh, having Marvin Harrison. I think I think he was saying his second year was when, when Marvin broke the record for like most catches in the season. So obviously he wasn't getting a ton a ton of balls thrown at him that year if if one guy had like hundred and fifty some catches. So um, you know, it, he's been great kind of being able to talk to you like that and just kind of like let him know like it, it like it, he lets you know it's 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 part of the game and you know just stay patient your time's coming how have you been able to remain so patient because we have seen you know there have been games where you've been targeted earlier maybe you haven't had as many targets in other situations that set you up to have a breakout game a career day your first 100 yard receiving day that you had last week like i said reggie's been a great help um i think the coaches all of them have been a great help you know, they talk to me, they, they basically say like, hey, like, like this hasn't been intentional that we're not, we haven't been getting you the ball as much. It's just, you know, it's just kind of the way the game's been flowing. Like we might call some things and I understand myself, um, you know, especially the things that they like to utilize me the most for um, down the field stuff. Like it, it really requires, it requires everybody on the field. It requires all other 10 players on the field. So. You know, first you got to get the play call, and then after that, they got to have the right coverage. Because if it's, if they're playing something that they don't want to throw the ball on the field, then they're just going to check it down or something. And then you got to you know you got to protect, and the quarterback's got to make a good throw. So it's a lot of things. It's it's truly like a like a team play, I'd say. Even though like, people might think, oh, that's a great throw by the quarterback, or that's a great catch. Like really, it's a lot more that goes into it. So many variables that it takes to create the type of, in particular, explosive plays that we saw last Sunday. And we see Michael, the yeah. physicality that he brings onto the field, but where has he had the most impact on you, especially as a leader, you know, as one of the guys in that room who is leading the offense? Uh, he's been great, just just a great teammate for me to have. Um, I think he's been great for my confidence. He's, he keeps me up, you know, he, he like lets you know, just like, hey, like we appreciate you, like you're a good player, your time's coming, stuff like that. Um, because I think he, he knows, he, he says the same thing. He was saying, oh, you know, my, my first year or two, like I had T.Y. here. And he's like, you just gotta, you just gotta be ready to make the play when the ball comes to you because you're not gonna be that guy, the number one guy that they're, that they're looking to go to. But he's like, It'll, the ball will find you at some point, you know, so he's, he's been good with that too. How exciting is it for you to have a play caller, a head coach, that is as, I don't know if aggressive is the right word, but maybe like innovative or, you know, the way that Shane calls games and puts you guys in those situations. Yeah, it's it's super exciting, you know, playing out there, playing with the offense. Um, I've been having a good time this year. Um, I think we have, an, like, we play an exciting brand of football. Um, so, you know, I'm excited for the future with that. We saw last Sunday, too, it was the My Calls, My Cleats game. Guys across the locker room showing their support for a number of charitable causes. You selected Riley Hospital for Children. I know that you've made a lot of visits there that have been part of the Community Tuesday events, but also just going on your own and visiting kids at Riley Hospital. What is the impact? We see the impact that you have on those kids. Their faces just lighting up, being able to spend time with you. What's the impact that those visits have had on you? Oh, they've been great. Um, you know, I was I was lucky enough to you know randomly be paired with them. Um, we did like a luncheon event mm -hmm. right before the season, the kickoff event, um, and I sat with IU Health and, and Riley's Children's Hospital. So I met the CEO of Riley's uh, there, and he's been he's been great. You know, he told me he was telling me, oh, you know, Peyton Manning used to come by a lot, and Matt Ryan last year would come by a lot. He's like, you just you can take out my number, and like whenever you want to come by and see the kids, whenever you get a little bit of free time during your schedule, you know, he's like just shoot me a text and so anytime kind of you know if I get like a day off or whatever and I got some time you know I shoot a text and he, he'll have it set up he's like you can come by whenever and 
like we'll, we'll have you come through and see some of the kids and I think for me it, it's it's great to see those kids, you know, try to bring a smile, put a smile on their face and that, but it just, it puts things in perspective too, you know, like, it's just, um, like that, that they can be, you know, smiling and happy, even though they, they might, they're in a pretty tough situation. Um, so I think it's, it's definitely just puts things in perspective. And I think that's been, been good for me personally. It is. It's one of those things where, you know, you see regardless of what they go through, they have this positive outcome and they're able to right. just be so resilient through it. Right. And it really does just make it such a powerful experience and just such a reminder of how privileged we are to get to work in the world of, of football in particular. This Sunday, going to Cincinnati, how yeah. full circle is it for you to go back? You're playing the Bengals, playing college football at the University of Cincinnati. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Um, I'm like really excited to go back. Hopefully, I have a lot of friends in the stands. I think you know I'll be hopefully be able to meet up with some of the guys uh, the day the day before when we get into town. Maybe grab dinner or something. Um, but yeah, I love the city. It was a great. The city was great to me. Um, you know, so I'm excited to go back there and play. Alec, congratulations on an outstanding game last week. Excited to see many more from you moving forward as we make this playoff push and keep stacking those wins. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Mm. He got the nice vocals. Oh, say does that start spreading Coming up, mic'd up in Music City. No stranger to center stage, Julian Blackman is wired for a wild win against Tennessee. Next on Colts 360. This season, Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield is teaming up with the Colts to shine a light on outstanding small businesses. Indy's our hometown and boosting local business is just one way we want to thank this great city. Go to Colts.com slash Anthem Spotlight to nominate your favorite small business today. Anthem and the Colts, helping Hoosier small businesses score. It's time for the Forum Credit Union Question of the Week. Who holds the Indianapolis Colts record for the most receptions in their first four seasons? Michael Pittman Jr. with 314, passing Marvin Harrison, who previously held the record with 311. Visit the Forum Credit Union Fan Forum section of Colts.com to interact with other fans online. Forum Credit Union, helping members live their financial dreams. Let's go! It took all four. Keep having our back. Keep having our back, bro. For the shoot. All love. Love you, my dudes. Roll kill. The most there. Roll kill. Let's go. Coach W. Let's keep this train rolling. Hey, Pia Beast. Whoa. That's a win. That's a dub. Coach, do that overtime now. Hey, big dub. Walk off. Big dub. This is sweet. Dubs. Michael Pittman, dog. Gardner Minshew, dog. Having a baby. Adios. The Colts are hot on that four game win streak and thanks in large part to the consistency of the defense. We had Julian Blackman mic'd up in Music City for the Colts sweep of the Titans. Another opportunity to be great today. Watch what happens. We're gonna turn up for the city. We're gonna rock back home with the dub. Damn, throwback, rookie year. I just thought of that right when we took that pick. <laughs> Buffalo. Mm. He got the nice vocals. Dale. Oh, Dale. Y'all boy crazy. Okay, Y'all boy crazy. Yes, Give me a T. 
<laughs> there go the track speed. There go the track speed. I knew it. Hey, it's turnover time. Good luck, Perry. Tell you. Is that what we want, no? This way, this way, get Nick Cross! Nick Cross! That was crazy. That was a crazy sequence. That was a crazy sequence. Like, how does that even happen? He said, you ain't tough, you a podcaster. Oh. He might be right. Hey, he, he might be in. right. He, he tuned in on the show. No he, he, he watching that after the game. No <laughs> Mic'd Up, presented by WM, always working for a sustainable tomorrow. Thanks for spending part of your weekend with us and getting ready for game day right here on Colts 360. Colts make the trek to Cincinnati for that Sunday 1 o'clock kickoff. You can get all the latest Colts news and updates on the Colts app, Colts.com, and all of the Colts social channels. Also, be sure to download the official Colts podcast. That is available anywhere you get your podcasts. Here is an extended preview of this week's episode with special guest offensive coordinator Jim Bob Cooter. When you first had the opportunity to coach with Shane Steichen, what was something about him that indicated to you, not only is this guy going to get a head coaching opportunity in the league, but also, man, this is a guy who I would love to join on the staff, and I feel like that we could build something special in an offense together. Yeah, great question. Um, I mean, in, in Philly, the year I was there, uh, I was lucky enough to have a role where I could really, um, really watch the staff in action, watch those guys work. Um, sort of see how Shane thought about different aspects of the game, which is always, always valuable to sort of, sort of see how guys see how guys see things and think about things. And that was really eye opening to me to to hear a few things that he said that were, you know, really good points. Maybe I hadn't thought of before. Um, but really, the thing that's most exciting is just Shane's boy day after day, day in day out demeanor, just mm -hmm. coming to office, coming to the office, coming to work. Um, you know, putting in a good work day, going into the next good work day, not letting. You know, we're going to have these moments in practice where we make a mistake on offense or maybe game day we make our mistake. And as coaches, we always coach that, and sometimes we get animated. Uh, Shane has done such a great job of, you know, sort of, you know, we, we, we coach that play or we coach that mistake, and then we're just on to the next one. We're going to have a good day the next day. We're going to have a good uh, period the next practice period. We're going to, you know, he just kind of keeps us going in a good direction. Um, that was evident in Philadelphia. 